Goku Sun DBC and welcome back for a new top 10 favorites list. This episode is my top 10 favorite Sega Saturn games of all time. My first list like this was of course the Sega Dreamcast, which has gone back and forth being my favorite. With that said, today I'm ranking my top 10 favorite games, which conveniently luckily I have all my favorites. But with that said, one honorable mention quickly that I don't unfortunately have a physical copy of um, is called Area 51. Hands down my favorite shooter ever on the original Sega Saturn. So, first up of honorable mentions, we have, of course, the truly improved version of Virtual Fighter. No, is of course Virtual Fighter Remix, a superb, excellent fighting game, which was cool. The fact a lot of the time this game actually would be included with the Sega Saturn console, which is good because this is a solid, really good 3D fighter. But still, it just gets an honorable mention. Next up, honorable mentions I feel is a almost completely overlooked fighting game from, of course, Capcom, called Cyberbots, Full Metal Madness. And, of course, this is a game, actually, the character Jin, or Gene, however, Jin came from, of course, in Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2. But it's a really fascinating robot mech battling fine game, and it truly is a classic. Plus, it's cool, you can unlock a Gundam-sized version of Kuma, which is awesome, or just Goki, of course, Japanese name. Next up, honorable mentions, another, I think, very overlooked 3D fighter, really good, of course, specifically on the Sega Saturn, and that being Fighting Vipers. There's a lot of hidden gems and highly underrated games on the Saturn, just like the Saturn itself is a highly underrated console, in my opinion. Next is Biohazard, or Resident Evil 1, if you will. Now, if you want to play a full original version of the game, not censored at all, you're going to have to go with the Japanese version of Resident Evil 1, aka Biohazard. Now, funny enough, all the audio and stuff is all in English, but the text, unfortunately, is in Japanese, so it makes it a bit hard. But still, if you want to play a full, unaltered, completely uncensored version, this is the only way to do it, unfortunately. Last two honorable mentions, first up is, of course, Battle Arena to Shinden, which is one of only three Saturn games I have in the big long box case. But it's an interesting game, and they even added, like, audio clips and stuff, anime clips between the characters before battles, which is interesting they added that to the remix, though the voice acting, of course, is pretty horrible. Last honorable mention, of course, would be the game that really started and set the way for the Marvel vs. Capcom series. And, of course, that would be X-Men Children of the Atom, which hopefully, eventually, I can get a Japanese import version of this game because I love the box art better. Never was the biggest fan of these huge, oversized cases because how much space they take up. But still, it is a superb and pretty challenging fine game, to say the least. But with that said, let's get in at number 10. First up, from Capcom, of course, the master of 2D fine games, coming at number 10, favorite game on the Saturn, is Marvel Super Heroes, which in my opinion is definitely criminally underrated and deserves a lot more respect than it does. It was cool, it got to go with X-Men Children of the M, and of course that 1UP Arcade like collection of three games. That was cool, so at least it's starting to get a little bit of recognition. I will say I'm glad I chose to go with the Japanese version of the game because if you want the American version of this on Saturn, you're paying upwards of $150 to $200. Buy the Japanese like I did, you can get for like 30 Way cheaper. Number two, fa or rather number nine favorite Sega Saturn game is, uh, of course, the sequel to the original classic, Panzer Dragoon. And, of course, coming at 9 is Panzer Dragoon Zwei. I hope I'm saying that right, Zwei. 
It is interesting to use the German word, but nevertheless, it's a superb, really good on-rail shooter like the first game. I personally like the first one a bit more than the second one, though I will say mechanically it does play a little bit better, but still a, another criminally under a game. Coming in at number 8 is, of course, the first true of the Capcom crossover games, of course, that being X-Men vs. Street Fighter, number 8. Definitely a superb game, and a lot of people praise this. I will say it is great, but I don't feel it's the best of the two crossover games on the Saturn, personally. But that's just me. But still, nevertheless, it does come in at number 8 of my favorites. Coming in at number 7 is a game that is unfortunately often overlooked. It is unfortunate I got stuck with this with the cardboard instead of the regular case when I got it years back. Still is a superb, great game. And of course, that is Virtual Fighter 2. Comes in 7th place, and frankly... I'm not surprised. To this day, this is pretty much my favorite of the Virtual Fighter series. But that's just me personally. But, yeah, it sadly always gets overlooked, much like other games. Coming in at number 6, from actually SNK. And that is Samurai Showdown 4. Personally, for me, this is my favorite of the old school 2D Samurai Showdown games, hands down. Though, I would say, overall, I like the new Samurai Showdown maybe just barely a bit more than this, but it's pretty much neck and neck for being my favorite of the entire franchise as a whole. And just a great gem of a great 2D fighter from SNK on the Saturn. And plays great. Coming in at number 5 is, of course, a game I consider essential for any Saturn fan or any Saturn collector. Now, of course, I don't recommend playing this game without, of course, the 3D controller, Saturn controller. You can sometimes find them in bundles like I did, but it does run a little pricey, but it's really the only way to play Nights into Dreams. But, for me, it's hands on my favorite platformer on the Saturn, and it was definitely one of the first games I ever played on the Saturn, and I fell in love with it. It really was, in many ways, a spiritual successor to Sonic. But it's unfortunate this game doesn't get more credit than it deserves. Coming at number four, another superb, of course, 2D fighter, and that being, of course, the sequel to the original Vampire or Darkstalkers. Of course, in the West, this would be known as Night Warrior, Dark Stalkers, but in Japan, Vampire Hunter. But to me, this is great. I mean, they worked out so many of the glitch issues and gameplay issues that was in the original Vampire. It plays way smoother, mechanically speaking. And in general, I just recommend Vampire Hunter quite a bit. Definitely, if you want to play Pyron, this is the preferred version. Coming in at or, I guess, technically, I was backtracked a little. Coming in at number three, or whatever, is the original Panzer Dragoon game. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the original case that this game came in. Lost it years and years ago through multiple moving through the years. But I'm glad I still have the game. Eventually, I'd like to either get a replacement case or get another copy. Complete. But Panzer Dragoon is just a superb, the best on-rail shooter, in my opinion, pure and simple, on any Sega console. But that's just my opinion. But this is the game that got me to fall in love with the Panzer Dragoon series. Of course, this, Zwei, and Orita. I have yet to play, of course, Saga, because of the price, so I have a Japanese version, but unfortunately I can't read Japanese, which sucks. But, number three... Number two, in my opinion, is better than X-Men vs. Street Fighter, but that's just my opinion. And I love the fact the special bonus character, you get in the Japanese Saturn version of the game, which is a Japanese comedian, which is an interesting add-on to Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. But of course, I like the bit more of a diverse Marvel side roster on this game, 
as well as I like the fact the main boss being Cyber Akuma, which in my opinion is the best version of Akuma design-wise. Always will be my favorite version of Akuma throughout the years. But I still often on play this game to this day. It's just such a really solid, well-executed 2D fighter. But still, it comes in second to this. Coming at number one, favorite Sega Saturn game is, of course, Vampire Savior, known, of course, in the West as Darkstalkers 3. Now, this game is ridiculously superb and good. The gameplay aspects is just so good. And I gotta admit, as a antagonist slash boss, I actually really like Jetta. I like the fact he's very different, but he's actually a somewhat complex character. When you actually read into the comics and the entire backstory from the games and stuff, just in my opinion, this is probably the most underrated fighting game series from Capcom. And this hands down is easily the best 2D fighter to ever be released on the Saturn. I can't recommend buying this game enough. If you have to, get Darkstalkers 3, though I still say this is the best way to play the game because it's by far the best home console port the game ever got. But with that said, this was my top 10 personal favorite Sega Saturn games of all time. Leave a comment, tell me, what was your personal favorite Sega Saturn games of all time? Curious to hear response. And do you agree with me that hopefully someday we get a Sega Saturn Mini slash Classic? I definitely feel the console deserves that, and it'd be great to introduce a new generation of gamers to incredible masterpieces like Vampire Savior. But with that said, I'll see everyone next time. Same YouTube time, same YouTube channel. Stay tuned for some future top 10 lists like this. Next up on the agenda is PS1, but I'll see you then for that list.